we'll call this regular board meeting and session. Uh, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, we've got some uh, people here from the public to speak, so I just want to recognize that. Um, Tim, will you be speaking for Mrs. Cree, Mrs. Mears? Yeah, I no. will not. Okay, so you'll be speaking on your own. Okay. So we have several people to speak. I will bring those forward uh, as we get to that topic. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, also tonight, um, we need a roll call from the board members. So uh, would each board member individually say their name and state if they are present? <coughs> Mr. Schwartzkopf. Uh, Kirk Schwartzkopf, present. Mike Reed, present. Tim Strasser, present. Chris Nipple, present. Gil Smith, present. Steve Meyer, present. Right. Zach Owen, present. So everyone, every board member is present tonight. Uh, next thing on our agenda would be, uh, I need a motion for the approval of the amended agenda presented to you tonight. <coughs> Second. All right. and. Um, on that, I just want to put one comment in. We do have uh, a letter of resignation from Mr. Steve Meyer for uh, the board. He will be stepping down in December. That is on the amended agenda tonight. Um, so I just want to let everybody know that that is why one of the reasons we are amending it. So that will be in section six, letter G. We have added letter G tonight. Okay. Any questions, comments on the approval of the amended agenda? <coughs> all right. All in favor of the approval of the amended agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next on the table here, we I need an approval or a motion for the approval of the minutes for the August 14th, 2023 regular session and the August 21st, 2023 work session. And that is it. Mr. President, I move to approve the minutes for the uh, August uh, 14th regular meeting and then also August 21st uh, work session. Second. And were there any uh, questions or comments or concerns about that, the approval of the minutes? Okay. Uh, all in favor of the approval of the minutes for the August 14th and August 21st regular meeting and work session, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. All right, next on our list is 3A. <coughs> we need to open a public hearing for the SEA 390 collective bargaining. So I would like to open that hearing now. And then uh, we have several people uh, that would like to speak in attendance tonight. Um, we will start with Jennifer Landis, please. Good evening. I am Jennifer Landis. This is my 28th year at Delphi, all at the middle school. I teach uh, language arts. Over the years, I've done sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and then this year, I have all three at the same time. I am a Delphi graduate, and my experience at Delphi was a positive one, so when a position opened up right after college, I liked the small town feel, so I came back to Delphi. When my kids started probably high school was when I started to realize, well, for that but things were really getting expensive and the teaching salary didn't quite cover everything 
Uh, at that time, I got a I got a job during the winter holiday months at Walmart as a cashier on the weekends and some nights. In the last couple of years, I have worked at Purdue as a football suite manager, and then I also have worked um, <coughs> events, staffing events um, to supplement my income. At the risk of sounding narcissistic, I personally feel like I go above and beyond just my teaching duties I, for the school. My list of extracurriculars and committees and school improvement plans that takes more than a page if I were to fill out a resume. I've stayed through all the trials and tribulations, both at the state level and the local level, because I believe in education. And no teacher goes into teaching to be rich, but at the same time, we don't go into teaching expecting to have an extra job or to qualify, in some cases, for welfare assistance. Thank you. Okay, we will jump a little forward on the list here. Uh, Courtney Cree, please. Okay, um, thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Courtney Cree. Um, this is my seventh year teaching here at Delphi. I have taught both first and second grade at the elementary school. Um, so I relocated to Carroll County from Northeast Indiana in 2011 after accepting a teaching position. And I was lucky enough to find a husband, start a family, and make this community my home. Uh, so my first four years in teaching were spent at Carroll Consolidated School Corporation. My family and I spent two years living in Michigan before coming back to Delphi in 2017. <coughs> As fate would have it, DCES had an open position at that time. I was able to find my place in our school. I love teaching here at DCES and my children love attending our school. I have made a genuine connection with the students in the building and have been able to watch them grow throughout the years. The staff have embraced me and I uh, truly believe every teacher in our building is here with the best efforts and the best efforts and intents in teaching our students. When I was first hired in 2017, my initial contract amount was for $39,221. What I didn't realize that seven years, multiple contract negotiations, and a few raises later, I would be making almost the same amount today. I was absolutely disheartened when I was handed my new contract in 2021. For everyone that isn't aware, um, when the last contract was bargained, all the employees went onto the salary grid closest to where their previous level of pay was. Because I was making below the new state minimum, I went onto the bottom of the grid. I had thought that I would maybe make a little more than that. Um, at that point, I had eight years of experience and knowledge, which I felt should count for something. However, I was only making $40,600. So $600 above the state minimum in my ninth year of teaching. <coughs> my paycheck was essentially stating that I was no more valuable than a first year educator. And that my past eight years of effective and highly effective ratings counted for nothing. Then in 2000, the 2022 school year, I did receive a $1,200 raise. To be honest, I'm very apprehensive about this new contract negotiation. If all we do is increase the minimum starting place and pay staff onto the new grid closest to their previous thing, their previous level of pay, I fear that I'm going to make the exact same amount as a first year teacher again. But this year, it'll be my 11th year teaching. I feel like turnover has been incredibly high over the last few years, and I believe that pay is a huge factor in that. Sadly, I understand their perspective, as the idea of leaving to receive adequate compensation has crossed my mind. I'm here for the students, but being here for the students doesn't pay my bills or provide groceries for my own children. Um, simply increasing the minimum pay does nothing to compensate for those of us who have made a home here at Delphi and are invested in the students in this community. Uh, I think those years of effort and service should count for something. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll go with uh, Taylor Mears, please. Good 
Good evening, I'm Taylor Mears. This is my third year here at Delphi and my sixth year teaching overall. I serve on the Leader Me Lighthouse Leadership Team within Delphi, our One School One Book Committee, our Read Across America Committee, and just attended a PTA meeting before we came here tonight. So while I'm contracted for eight hours a day, um, my average day is more like 10 hours, and my work week is upwards of 60 hours, including my weekends. Um, these hours are just what I counted as independent hours working towards my classroom. It didn't include things like um, extra commitments, those committees that I mentioned, um, planning field trips for our grade level team, com parent communication, which goes on all hours of the night if you let it, <laughs> um, and other things that take place such as this board meeting or like I mentioned the PTA meeting that I attended prior. I'm given roughly three and a half hours of planning for a five day week. This past week I had one hour of math PD that I was required to be at an hour of a reading cadre meeting and RTI meetings for my students. Our prep seems to dwindle more each, each year with the commitments and demands put in place with that scheduled time. Um, something I'm often told is we work short hours, we work short days, and we get summers off, so who wouldn't want to be a teacher? But uh, teachers don't exactly get the summers off. Uh, this year I was uh, lucky enough to attend the Get Your Teach On conference in Texas <coughs> for a week. Um, while I was happy that the corporation supported my um, admission to the conference, I paid the trip's expenses to get there. And then after returning, I learned so much about what I needed to change in my ways of teaching that I began working 10 hour weeks over the, the remainder of the summer in my classroom. I appreciate that uh, Delphi Corporation <coughs> compensates for a master's degree as I have one, and I know all corporations do not do that, um, but I can't quite consider it a bonus yet as I'm still paying off those student loans. So that's not really a bonus that I'm seeing yet in my income. Um, I cannot support my, my own family on one income alone with the time commitment that I have invested in my teaching career um, that has my husband working two jobs so that I can continue to fulfill my passion of teaching. Uh, inflation has been a challenge for us over the past couple of years. Simple things like getting a more reliable family vehicle. I am not able to sign on a loan. I have to have my husband co-sign on anything that I get a loan for. Um, and even a <coughs> used vehicle payment is not affordable on my income alone. Changes in society, lack of family support, behavior issues, and administrative demands have me December tired in September. December tired is when you are counting down those days for a break to rejuvenate and re-energize to be the teacher that you were created to be. It's too early for me to be counting down yet. My mom graduated from Delphi here in 81, Janelle Ward, and my grandpa Dwayne Ward served many years on this very school board. I'm married to Amir's. If those things don't tell you anything, I have some deep ties to this community and I feel strongly about that. I wanna pass that on to this, pass on my passion for this community to my sons as my oldest starts kindergarten this year and is quickly learning his oracle pride. Teachers need to be valued and compensated to keep their passion alive. I love my second grade team and the close bond that we all share. My hope is that I can feel that bond building and corporation wide as I hear it once was. I wanna be part of the solution to stopping our revolving door and teaching alongside veterans that share a love for our community. I'm early in my career, but I hope to call Delphi my home for the remainder of my career. I feel strongly about being competitive in surrounding, to surrounding corporations to offer the same pay and benefits, if not better, to attract licensed and qualified teachers who also want to make Delphi their home for the remainder of their career. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Kirkwood. Thank you. <clears throat> so, Mrs. Circle and school board members, I want to thank you for taking a moment to listen to my concerns. This is my 11th year at Delphi Community High School. I've worked as a ser the student services director since 2013. I replaced <laughs> Jan Israel, who was here for several decades before I got here. One of the biggest reasons that I chose Delphi as my school to work at was the longevity of the staff. It was and is impressive when a school corporation can keep their staff and minimize turnover. Unfortunately, I also came during a time where there were no income raises or cost of living adjustments. This means my pay is significantly below my level of expertise and experience. I've spent the last 10 years telling myself, this will figure itself out and it will work. <clears throat> and trying to stay positive about my opinion. 
that kind of changed when the community didn't support the referendum. The concern about the salary took a new, a new look. I've always put my students first. This is, includes paying for their field trips, sometimes their sporting costs, supplies and other things that I know my students either want or need. It's part of being in high school is being able to do those things. <clears throat> Each year I replenish supplies for students to draw from during the school year because we know that becomes hard for our students. This all comes out of my own paycheck. Additionally, when I needed a new desk because the one I had every time I pushed on it, the glass top would flip up, I purchased my own and staffed my own office. I did this because the ones that were available to me were either very old, worn, or broken. And I wanted my students to know that I expected the best from them and to provide them with an environment in which they had the best. Doing what is in the best interest of my students, I give my time long past contract hours. Some days I come in early to meet with parents and students. Many days I stay late to meet with parents. If we want parents to be involved in their education, we have to meet them where they're at, and that includes being accessible during non-work hours or non-contract hours. <clears throat> Additionally, there are nights involved with the job that I have that are not monetarily compensated, like eighth grade parent night, FAFSA meetings, and other meetings that we hold for the community in order for them to better understand the education process. I understand I chose this profession. <coughs> I did so because I love working with children and I love working with their families. I love watching high school students figure out where they're going next and helping them get there, wherever that may be. I went to school and I got a bachelor's degree and then I went back and I got a master's degree just so I could do my job. It's only fair to be asked to be compensated for the level of education that I have, the work that I do, and the years of service. I know the school board and Mrs. Circle realize to best serve our students, we need a staff that's invested, feels appreciated, and is willing to be here for the long haul. It is my hope that we'll be able to continue the tradition of staff that stays, and that you will continue to understand that supporting your teachers and your education staff in a way that is fairly compensates them is incredibly important. <coughs> Thank you. Tim Connor. I have uh, several letters, um, and these are all from staff members uh, that I will be reading. Um, they could not make it here tonight. The first one is from Liz Hoffman. To whom it may concern. My name is Elizabeth Hoffman, but a lot of people call me Liz. I'm known to my students as Mrs. Hoffman, and I absolutely love teaching third grade. This is my ninth year of teaching and my second year at Delphi. I spent 13 years raising kids from 2009 to 2022, but I did teach for seven years from 2002 to 2009, one at T Twin Lakes, six at Community Schools of Frankfurt, and cannot picture myself doing anything besides working with children. My husband is an educator as well. He is in the beginning of his 25th year working for the Tipka New School Corporation as an English teacher at East Tip Middle School. Our three children go to Hershey and East Tip. I chose to teach at Delphi because I'm an oracle down to my bones, and I was raised here. I played sports, I was a class officer, and I participated in activities with pride. I want to carry that oracle pride forward in our students. I fully understand some of the reasons why our corporation has to pay teachers less than area corporations where some of my peers and family teach. However, the world is passing us by with inflation costs, and in my own corner of the world, the ever-increasing needs of my three children. My husband and I both have part-time jobs in addition to our teaching positions. We own our own home and our two cars and have always worked to stay out of debt, unfortunately raising three children on one teacher's income while I stay at home to raise them to kindergarten age while also teaching preschool and tutoring on the side was no small feat. We didn't, make, we didn't necessarily make it out unscathed. Interest rates are climbing and that credit card debt that started out small has climbed. And just as I was about to return to education, we were blessed with a large septic project. 
I mean, this septic project was a huge deal. <laughs> and luckily, our parents spotted us the money. We are lucky. We are, we are lucky. We are in debt. And we are Americans, Americans, and I digress. Needless to say, I am, of the, I am of the same opinion that Delphi teachers deserve a salary increase. I'm sure of all the reasons are obvious, but this is Mrs. Hoffman's small plea to ask you to consider the future of our staff and retain caring people in our teaching family and community. I want to thank you for your time and consideration. Respectfully, Liz Hoffman. This is from Brianna Griffiths. Uh, she teaches at the high school. To whom it may concern, when it comes to teaching, I absolutely love my job. I love interacting and guiding students. However, let me get to the <coughs> point as to why I'm writing this. I'm now in my second year of teaching and trying to make end meets when be possible on my teaching salary alone. $40,000 does not make ends meet. After taxes and insurance taken out, I bring home $550 a week. As a single mom of two kids or in this school corporation, I have to have another job to make ends meet meaning I am not able to be home with my own kids to help raise them because I'm having to work seven days a week to make ends meet. Not to mention, I have a high school student as an athlete. You could say, well, if you can't afford it, don't allow her to participate. That alone is easier said than done. I have recently tried to purchase a home and got denied without a co-signer. I am working a full-time job and yet can't get approved for a loan because of my salary. Let me put this in black and white. Monthly bring home income is $2,220. Car payment is $450. Insurance is $100. Water is $75. Internet is $88. Rent is $800. Groceries are $800. Our electric bill is $125. Gas is $135. Gas for car is $285. And all that alone is $3,000. And seven dollars. How can a teacher survive on one income? We can't give our all at teaching when we are having to work another job and trying to be a parent as well. Not to even factor in the extra stress that having hardly any money to do anything with. Again, how can we be a good teacher or parent and give all of our to our students when one is stressed about everything else? This is from Amanda Armstrong. She's the Choral and Drama Director at Delphi Community Middle School and High School. Dear School Board, my name is Amanda Armstrong and this is my third year of teaching choir music at Delphi Community Middle and High School. The moment I stepped foot into my interview, I knew this was the right fit for me. I couldn't ask for a better corporation <coughs> to work for to begin my career in. I feel that I can grow and learn here. My students are also all amazing. I usually don't brag about myself since being here. My high school choir program has tripled. I feel that I am making a positive impact in the future of the choir program, and I can't wait to move forward. My personal life the last couple of years has been nothing but a whirlwind in a good way. Two years ago, my husband and I found out that I was pregnant, pregnant two months into my first year. We were blessed that we were given this opportunity to be parents, as I didn't think this could happen due to health concerns. Before our daughter arrived, we bought our first home and car, and this was a huge and scary deal for us since we were 22 when making these financial decisions. Moving forward now, our daughter's 14 months old, and we expect our family to grow in the next few years. Inflation has impacted our family more than what we were prepared for. Basic necessities such as food and transportation have spiked our budget. Both my husband and I drive 45 to 50 minutes each way to get to our teaching jobs every day due to the lack of music and math positions around the area. The last couple of years, I've probably spent thousands of dollars for my own classroom on storage, school supplies, tech equipment, decorations for concerts and events, and rewarding my students for their hard work. Being a music director anywhere is not an easy task. You have lots of before and after school commitments, most weekends, and extracurricular activities. One of the things I love about my job is that I have the same students for years. In this case, I have them from 6th to 12th grade. I get to witness them accomplish many things and grow from their mistakes, both in and out of my room. The hard part of this idea, however, is keeping them <coughs> in the programs, whether from scheduling conflicts or other reasons. I'm selling the choir program to students every day, not just once a year. My choral leaders and I come up with at least one event a semester to do together as a whole program. Last year we baked cookies, did Secret Santa, and had a movie night. With all this, 
along with the fundraisers, traveling, outreach, etc., I probably spend 20 extra hours a week trying to accomplish all this and more so that my students have positive experiences that they will remember for a lifetime. I know that I am a new teacher. My story and concerns may not even matter compared to those that have been here for 20 or 30 years. However, I'm passionate about what I'm doing here and would like to continue. This past year, I feared that my time here would be forced to be cut short because I can't be a provider for my family. I'm not ready to let go of what I've started. Musically yours, Amanda Armstrong. This is from Jill Rapp. She teaches second grade at the elementary school. Let me begin by saying thank you for allowing me to have a voice and express myself at this meeting. I cannot be in attendance tonight as I have my son's football game to attend. And he plays for Carol. First of all, okay, I'm just throwing that one out there. First of all, I, I just want to see if you were listening. I want to commend the Delphi uh, School Corporation for being a great place to work for almost 30 years. When I first started subbing in this corporation, I was subbing in two other districts as well as Delphi. It was a friendly and welcoming atmosphere that I noticed here, which led me to exclusively sub when Mr. Carroll asked me to do that. Working here for all my career, the co-workers I have at Delphi are the reason why I stayed here. I found that support to be what draws me to stay, support from my teams that I've had through the years. The many administrators that I've worked for, my DCA team, and the kids that truly need us to be here for them, not only academically, but also as mentors. I truly love what I'm doing, and it is worth the hours of sacrifice that it takes away from my own health and meeting the needs of my family. I can't think of anything else that it would allow me to influence children's lives and to have a part of who they become as citizens of our community. Unfortunately, I've seen the demands on teachers become unrealistic without regard for teachers as human beings with personal lives. As someone who's taught for almost 30 years, I should have this down to be able to work from 7.30 to 3.30, feel good about what I've managed to accomplish each day. Instead, it's a 10-hour days and weeknight and weekend hours away from the mental time, a way that I and others so desperately need. I see new teachers, older teachers, and everyone in between already exhausted in September. I see teachers working through lunches, through PD time, any time just to be able to make a dent in the ever-increasing workload. I also see the time that we're supposed to be engaging with students become rushed and not as meaningful as it should be as we try to find ways to multitask everything. Our teachers are earning every penny and then some. The younger teacher's salaries are close to poverty rate. Teachers need a boost in every way, including salaries. With every admin change, there have been new changes that come each year, it seems. More time is taken away from teachers to plan by having meeting after meeting. Many of those meetings are to tell teachers what additional planning they need to do while taking the planning time away from them. Every email is a list of change that needs to be made from a way we are doing it the year before. We are constantly shifting in midst of what we had just learned previously, circling around to what was done as little as five years ago in some cases. We understand the fact that change is inevitable and to be effective educators, some shifts are necessary to meet the changing needs of our students. We've just got to find a way to take some of this off our plates and fairly compensate our teachers. Delphi should become the school where you want to teach and stay to teach. Now teachers can choose schools with better benefits, better leadership, better pay, better morale. Don't we want to be that school? I want Delphi to be that school, not another step along the way, just somewhere else down the road. In closing, I'd like us to consider what we can all do to come together and make Delphi that corporation. I see school staff every day trying to make that happen, and I am asking all the stakeholders to jump on that bandwagon with us and make our teachers feel like they're supported and valued. Our teachers deserve it. Sincerely yours, Jill Rout. And this font is way too small. <laughs> and that was not meant to be funny. This is from Angela Barnes. She's an art teacher at the elementary school. To whom it may concern, 
My name is Angela Barnes and I'm an elementary art teacher. This is my third year and I love teaching at Delphi because I get to have an hour for each of my classes to share my knowledge and skills. I don't just consider myself an art teacher, yet someone who tries to instill good morals, values, and social skills to students so they can become quality members of our society in the future. I enjoy working with the students and my colleagues. Furthermore, I take my position very seriously and pride myself on student success. For the past two years, I've tried to bring the art curriculum back to what it used to be in the past, and I will continue to do so. Delphi has always been rich in the arts, which brings unity and enrichment to our community. For the past two years, <coughs> I've put in countless hours to make challenging lessons for our kiddos. It takes a lot of time to plan a state standard aligned art cu curriculum, create samples, organize student work, clean, mount, and hang the artwork. I also organized art fundraisers to raise money so students could experience different mediums and use higher quality materials. I know I put in much more time than I should have, but I do it for my students. In addition, I paid $450 <laughs> a year out of my own pocket for the Deep Space Sparkle art curriculum to enrich my program. Not to mention all the materials I purchase when I unexpectedly run out of something or see something at Goodwill that I can use for my lessons and I can't get elsewhere. I'm divorced and live alone and like others I struggle financially. It is tough to pay for a mortgage, vehicle, etc. on just one paycheck. I have thought about getting another part-time job but I'm so exhausted from teaching I can't seem to find the energy. My credit card debt seems to be rising due to inflation Prices have, have risen more by percentage wise in my paycheck, and I do realize that the state has made it hard on all of us. In closing, I want you to know that I appreciate the opportunity to teach here at Delphi and to be able to do something that I enjoy and love while touching the <coughs> young lives of this community. Sincerely, Angela Barnes. This is from Madison Han Hancock, and she's a special ed teacher at the elementary school. My name is Madison Hancock, and I am currently the K-2 special education teacher. Even though that's my title, I serve as K-4. through This is my second year here at Delphi, <coughs> and I couldn't have asked more for a better team to work with. And she's right across the hallway from me, too. With inflation on everything, my boyfriend and I are struggling to keep up with the groceries, bills, and loans, like student loans, car payments, Gas is a huge deal since I've been living in Carmel and drive one hour and 15 minutes one way each day. This year alone, I spent a lot of my money to get my classroom how it is now. Last year, I started doing Instacart and DoorDash in order to keep up with bills, groceries, and other school decor and supplies. This may only be my third year of teaching, but I do more than my job description and deserve to be paid as such. I work after hours and through the weekend to ensure my students needs are met. I care about these kids so much and only wish for them to succeed. Sincerely, Madison Hancock. Okay, this is from Sue Harrison. She's a special ed teacher at the elementary school. 